Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, listeners. This is your host, Andy Curry. Welcome to the show today. Folks, I have a really interesting guest that you're going to love. Her name is Judith Bryles. She has been speaking for an amazing 40 years plus. The content she speaks on is publishing and social media. She speaks primarily in the U.S., and she is based out of the beautiful state, my home state, Colorado. Yay, Colorado. She has written an amazing and astounding 34 books. That's right, folks. You heard me say 34. And uh, Judith, welcome to the program. We're happy to have you. Oh, it's my pleasure to be with you here today. Well, Judith, let's let's dive in. Tell us about your speaking business and publishing. Well, speaking uh, started almost by accident, Andy, that I received a phone call that someone asked me if I could come over and speak about uh, women and money, and that's what my primary, that was my business at that time was finance, because the person who was supposed to be speaking, this is the 70s, uh, couldn't come out because her husband didn't want her out at nighttime. So I said, sure, I'll drive across the bay. I lived in San Francisco at the time Mm -hmm. and do this talk. And I discovered I had a lot to say. Out of that, I created a full one-day course speaking about finances directed toward women. Out of that, I created my first book called The Woman's Guide to Financial Savvy. Now, what I didn't understand, I didn't know, is that books beget more books. And that was just the beginning. And uh, so it, it trekked by. And the books, the type of books that I wrote evolved as my career evolved and the changes. I eventually was in the whole behavior area where I was dealing with conflict and I had several books and specifically in the healthcare area. And then I transitioned into over a decade ago, just focusing on publishing because I had always been dedicated to showing others who wanted to write a book in which, which many, many came from the speaking community, how to write a book because it would enhance your career and certainly add to your bottom line in product related sales. That is, it's amazing how that's evolved for you. Now, you have written 37 books, so are you doing this all yourself? I mean, because you have love for words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I do everything myself. Um, but I, I also, as a book shepherd, I help other authors get their words together, and sometimes I, I've had to dive in and, and gut them and rewrite the whole thing because, you know, it's not their gift. The written word wasn't their gift, that verbally they seem to get it out, but it's just not their gift, and they need help. And I think what's important for everyone who's interested in speaking is I think you should have a book and knowing that more will breed from it, but if if this isn't your skill set, for heaven's sakes, get some help from someone who can help it, whether you have to do a full-blown ghosting or that you work, you, you get the really rough down, and then you come to someone like me who can do content editing and get you shaped up, so you can move in the direction of having a real book book. So if a speaker or professional, well, besides a speaker, dentist even, doctor, if they wanted to write mm-hmm. a book, they could mm-hmm. come to you, and they, they would initially do a consultation with you, and you just sort of start guiding them. Is that how you work? Yeah, you can, you can tell very quickly where their their talents are, um, if if they can write or they can't write, and that and you have to be really brutal, um, and and really recognize all all of us have to look in the mirror. What are we good at and what we're not good at, and you have to let your ego step aside. And and what happens though, that so many times in the book related side, is I see people say, okay, I'm going to do more research. I'm going to go do another interview. I'm going to go do this. And what they do is they're practicing one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, three to get ready, three to get ready. (laughs) And they don't get off the dime and go. So if the goal is to create a book to support a speaking career or to create a book to launch a speaking career, they can go either way, um, that you got to get it going. 
and the sooner the better in the process. Okay. Now, when you're giving talks to audiences Mm -hmm. and you're talking to them about publishing, what is it that you're teaching them when you're there? Oh, it's so varied. It could be as simple as how do you pitch yourself so you can uh, hook the reader to want your book? How do you pitch yourself to an agent to want to bring you in and look at your stuff? How do you pitch yourself to uh, a meeting planner that might want to bring you in to speak about your book? It could be pitching. It could be, uh, I have a whole talk I, I love to do on how to create Jedi marketing using social media to push your book out there. I have another book on, you know, boring speeches, create a a boring experience. So how do you structure a talk around your book? How do you create a workshop? How do you create an online course? Um, All those kind of things. How do you you create a podcast um, and develop it off your expertise? And, And how do you really core that expertise, create the taglines, and know that if you're going to be successful as an author, if you're going to be successful as a speaker... You have to know it's up to you. It's up to me. It, it's 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 going to be. You, you've got to embrace what I call the Goit factor. Get off your tush. You've got to really understand that you need to learn it. And for one, I, I but I love about social media because you're talking to someone who hated it. I wasn't going to go down that path. I wasn't going to get sucked into that. Social media is the town hall of all marketing right now. And for anyone who is listening in that is still resisting, I just have three words for you. Get over it. You have got to, if you've got a product and your mouse could be the product, your book could be a product, you can, your gizmo, whatever the gizmo is, is the product. Your company service is the product. If you're not aggressively engaging in social media in a consistent, committed basis, you are really going to be thrown off the boat. Interesting. So the people you work with, have you worked with, uh, I, I would assume you've worked with people who just come to you blank, nothing, versus oh, yes. versus someone who <laughs> thinks they're just ready to go and maybe they're not. Oh, my gosh, Andy. I, I remember I have spoken from the platform and people say, oh, I love your talk. Oh, I love your talk. I want to be a speaker just like you. What should I speak about? <laughs> <laughs> You're going, oh, boy. Um, and the same thing with a book. Some people say, I have a book but I don't know what to write about. Okay, so you're not ready for the book yet. That the the people who come to me uh, usually have already started on the book, have really got their first draft done of their book. They Oh, they think they're done, but they're not. We're just starting. Um, and they may just say, I do want to write a book. How do I get started? So if, if we're with a blank slate, I've got to figure out first what their topic is, and I'll start building a game plan for them. Who are they writing for? Because one of the most important things is when you're writing is to really clearly identify who that reader is. Is it male or female, or is it both? Are they older or are they younger? What what kind of age bracket? Are they married or single, or is that irrelevant? Um, do they have a wild, exotic life, or are they really sedate? But you, you, what are their what their problems are? And I think that one thing that's important for every speaker and every author to understand is that it's not money that makes the world go around; it's problems. So what problem are you going to be addressing? And if you're, it doesn't matter if it's fiction or nonfiction. You're dealing with problems. For fiction, it's an entertainment. I, I need to have entertainment. You're going to solve. You're going you're gonna to lure me in. You're going to seduce me. And you're going to engage me for hours and entertain me, whether it's fantasy, romance, fiction in some way, horror, fill in the blank. You're going to entertain me. Um, for nonfiction, you're going to solve a problem that is delivering a lot of pain. So mm-hmm. you need to know what the reader's pain is and then identify clearly the problem that's bringing the pain, the causation, what are the effects of all this, and then you're going to deliver the solution. And one of the things that's very important, Andy, for all of our listeners to understand is they need to start labeling themselves as an expert. I'm a book 
publishing expert. I am a book coach expert, right? That's me today in this 2015 year. Our listeners are experts in different areas and start getting out there. And by the way, you put that on all your social media platforms. You are an expert because it's one of the most common words when someone is doing a Google search looking for help, they will have expert behind that. So Mm -hmm. start using it. A little tip and trick here. And that, that I want to, you know, figure out what their expertise is. So we can start really putting together a strategy so they have really, uh, they can create that vision. And then I'll ask them, you know, what their vision is. What, what, what's their commitment to that vision? And, and what kind of, and commitment is time, energy, and money. So, and I want to know what their passion is. What's bringing them to the party? When you bring all those, that's a, that's a magic triangle. When you bring all those together, guess what? The people will come. The mm-hmm. people will find you. And a lot of people are under this misconception. Oh, I've got to have a lot of followers. I've got to have all these people before I could ever start writing. No, 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 no. If you go with your passion, you've got the vision of where you see this going. Where, where do you see you? Where do you see your book if it's a book? Where do you see you if it's a speech? Then then you you'd look at your commitment that you're going to go, okay, uh, this is a business. I'm going to building it. I view publishing as a full-time business. And I have made um, over over 30 years between selling books and getting paid for speaking engagements, I've created revenues in excess of $5 million. It is a full-time business that I'm committed to. And a lot of people think, oh, you can't make any money. Yes, you can, but you got to have a game plan. So part of my first consultation is putting together that game plan so they have that roadmap on where they're going to go out. That's terrific information. Now, what event or, let's see, what now, you don't, of course, have to name names, but can you mm-hmm. tell us about a, an author or someone, speaker, whatever you worked with, that just really surprised you and delighted you? And, and what was the event, you know, from working with them and publishing and such? Oh, we've, we've, had, we've had a lot of really fun surprises. One of the authors I worked with was a Hong Kong MD, and, um, and he had a huge global presence with his website, Dr. Lam MD, and he came in for his, his, his expertise dealt with nutrition and a topic called adrenal fatigue syndrome. And he came in with an idea. He had his book, and it was pretty academic. We had to unacademic it. Mm-hmm. Um, and get it. We introduced him to using call outs and creating ahas for the reader to go through. But he came in for one book. He left with 15. Wow. Because what I saw was there were natural synergy between certain chapters that should be broken down and put into mini books um, and doing that. So we ended up with mini and micro books, so, you know, single chapters with a mini books were grouping. We wrote new introductions to them. I wrote new back cover copy for them. I always write the back cover copy for all my authors I work with because I'm much more marketing oriented and, and most of them don't get how to do that. And, um, and he left with a series of books. He is now back in our office four years later. He has part of his team. They have a cookbook, which we are now going to indexing. It's a beautiful cookbook. I mean, the, the, I read, I mean, I actually read cookbooks. Um, and the rest, some of the recipes I salivating over. And the, uh, and then he is now in with a new advanced adrenal fatigue book, which we are now have into editing. Um, going on. So he came in for one book. He left with 15. He's back with two more, and there's another third one coming in behind it. Um, so that, and he's had enormous success. And of course, he had a huge following, which helped propel it. Another book that I loved coming in, and she is speaking, and all the, and, and where Dr. Lam is speaking, where Lynn Farrell is speaking on it, and she has a book called The Iodine Crisis. There is very few competition, although she was focusing a great deal on, on, uh, uh, the increase in breast cancer, um, and how she used, and her, her solution for her, her remedy for herself was, and, you know, put iodine back in her life, and I'm not talking about table salt, but it has very little iodine. 
but that, and I learned what I love about the variety of books I get to work with and the authors is I learn a lot. And I learned, learned about how when iodine used to be the normal thing that was in bread and things like that, where it was excluded and things like bromine was replaced in it, and how you can see disproportionately how when iodine came out in the introduction bromine that you saw the increase of breast cancer and prostate cancer and ovarian cancer. So um, that she has done enormously well. She has entered like six printing in just two years already on that book. And these authors are printing 5,000 copies at a, at a slap. Much, they're doing far better than any traditional published um, author. And then we've got just a variety of other authors that just delight me with the, the fun things they come up with. Um, that, you know, I have a, an ENT doc who created a book, you know, don't stick stuff, stick stuff in your, up your nose and don't stick stuff in your ears, things like that. <laughs> and, I, and, and, and a very, very, for kids, and right now I'm working on a poop book uh, for the poop detective. Um, and I have to go get the illustrators to bring it in. So each one of those have had their different form of success and done very well. And I bet other authors that get picked up by traditional New York. And if that's what they want to do, that's great. But the goal is to create a book that not only, you know, reads well, but looks good, feels good, and then does well as to what the individual author defines what success is for them. And that will be different, Andy, for everyone. It could be money. It could be uh, global recognition. It could be media. Um, it could be speaking gigs. That and, and many people will come in, you know, as the book will become the platform. I have a nurse I'm working with right now that her book is the platform for building a speaking career. Fantastic. Well, Judith, how can people... Uh, get a hold of you should they want to learn more about you or hear you speak? Uh, I'm very visible. All you have to do is go to thebookshepherd.com, the book shepherd. Make sure you spell shepherd right, S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D.com. I'd encourage everyone to subscribe to my blog, which comes out twice a week. And I do all kinds of tips and tricks, and I and my tips tips often are involved gizmos and gadgets, things that will make your speaking and authoring career easier, better, enhanced, uh, and, and all that. And that I have uh, my newest book is called The Crowdfunding Guide for Authors and Writers, and there is a free timeline cheat sheet on the website that you can uh, subscribe to and pull down. It's directly from the new book. So, and then email is Judith at Bryles.com, and that's B R I L E S. Okay, Judith. Well, thank you so much for sharing your information. That was a lot of fun to listen to. I, I know the listeners got a lot of value out of that. Thank you for having me, Andy. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.